arguably the most important purchase of my entire life occurred in September 2004. It was Dawn of War. Not the diet, it was the game Dawn of War, the Warhammer 40k RTS game developed by Relic Entertainment. And my most formative memory with that game is not playing it. It isn't beating the campaign or defeating an opponent in a skirmish match against all odds. No, the thing I most remember is when I first read the game manual. And for those who are watching who are young enough to fill my black heart with envy, video games used to come with these big old hefty manuals that give you everything you needed. They told you everything about the game, including the factions inside it, the setting of the game that you were about to play. And Dawn of War was a Warhammer 40k game. So really, this manual for Dawn of War was my very first exposure to the Warhammer 40k setting. I mean, sure, I'd seen the miniatures when walking by a game's workshop store, but I didn't know anything about them. And the stores themselves always seemed a little bit uninvited inviting to someone like me. So this was my first real introduction. So I didn't know it at the time, but this game would really go on to shape my life. And judging by some of the comments that this channel receives, probably for the worse. So there I was, a little discourse on the bus, reading away at her Dawn of War manual and all the Warhammer 40k lore contained within. First, I read the section on the Imperium, and oh boy, that was quite an intro. I was in awe at the ancient empire described within this book. I read about how it was beset on all sides by aliens and demons and how the only thing holding it together was their insane devotion to this corpse sat upon a golden throne. Say what you want about Warhammer 40k, but it is an incredibly evocative setting, and it totally fueled my imagination. It still does. And as I read this for the first time, I wondered what wonders, what horrors will I see in this universe? Imagine my disappointment then, when the very next thing I read about was a faction called the Space Marines. Really? The Space Marines? Warhammer 40k is this incredibly imaginative, incredibly interesting setting, and the primary protagonist faction is called the Space Marines. I couldn't put my finger on it at the time, and lord knows, I wouldn't have had the vocabulary to describe it, but really, that name is quite unfitting and pretty generic. Space Marines could have easily been called infantrymen, or astro soldiers, or space soldier army boys. But okay, that's only one faction. Move on to the next. So, I did. I read on. And what did I come to next? The Chaos Space Marines. So if the Space Marines had a generic, unfitting name, imagine what I thought about the Chaos Space Marines. Honestly, for a moment, I thought that they were a joke. You could tell that these characters were meant to be the bodies, of course, partly on account of all the spikes. But I could not help but think that this faction was incredibly lazy. Surely I cannot be the only person out there who first thought this when learning about the Chaos Space Marines. I have never really quite gotten on with Chaos, at least in 40k. As a faction, Chaos Space Marines always just sort of passed me by. I'm sorry to say this, but I've never really cared for them. So fast forward to 2022, Almost 18 years later, and here I stand, uh, uh, sit. And what do I hold in my hands? Why? It's the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Yeah, so, uh, what the f*** happened? And I wanted to tell you about my first formative experience with Warhammer, because it's really important to me that you understand how little I care about chaos. Until now. So what can I say except for the lore in this codex kinda got me. You see, the Chaos Space Marine lore got leaked, and it really compelled me to start a Chaos Space Marine army. I sort of fell in love. And it was mostly the new lore about the Imperium Nihilus that did it. I kinda love what Games Workshop are doing with Imperium Nihilus. And this is another surprise to me. I have been pretty unimpressed with most of the Warhammer 40k lore ever since the fall of Kidia. But I have to admit, some of the lore contained in the Chaos Space Marine Codex 
is some of the best lore Games Workshop have ever done. And for those who haven't kept up, briefly, the Imperium Nihilus is essentially half of the Imperium was split in two. One half still has access to the Astronomicon and all the infrastructure of the Imperium. The other half does not. That's the Imperium Nihilus. Imperium Nihilus is basically on their own. Until, of course, the Chaos Space Marines show up. And the Chaos Space Marines have basically taken over large sections of Imperium Nihilus. It's like this crazy no man's land territory over there. It's an all you can eat buffet for evil. There are small feudal sectors being run by individual Chaos Warlords. Some sections of the space are still Imperium controlled, but for how long? Other areas, sensing their opportunity, have declared independence from the Imperium, and even more sections have been turned into these mini-empires by entire Chaos Legions. For example, the Iron Warriors have taken a whole section of space and now control this empire containing a bunch of Forge Worlds, and they have turned the factories on those planets into producing weapons of war for their Legion. They have their own little mini-empire, their own Ultramar. There's even a story in the Codex about a Chaos Space Marine coming down to visit a planet pretending to be the Emperor himself. And everybody on the planet's like, oh yeah, sure, you're here for the tithe, right? And, he, and he's like, yeah, I'm here for the tithe. And they're like, sure, how about it? Here you go, because they don't know what the Emperor looks like. They're just impressed by this guy. I mean, he looks kind of the part. And it's this element of well, chaos that I'm really enjoying. I love that the Imperium is finally being shown as particularly vulnerable to the machinations of chaos precisely because of their extreme religious and oppressive societies. Let's be clear here, the Imperial bureaucracy is not a system that rewards asking questions. So when some fella shows up with blood running down his eyes and big evil looking angel wings, you'd best believe him when he says, give me the time. So Chaos here is using these superstitions and blind loyalty of Imperial subjects against the Imperium, and I am all here for that. I am here for it so much. That's really f***ing cool. It actually says something. So when this lore leaked, and I read it, boy, my mind went to some wild places. I got super excited and I planned to start a Chaos Space Marine Army for the first time in my entire life. And I was going to start it this month and it was going to start small and then get bigger. Except there was one caveat. My dream Chaos Army was going to be made up of Chaos Cultists. It was going to be a renegade army of mortals. And leading up to the release of the Chaos Codex, it felt pretty reasonable, actually. It felt like a good idea. It seemed that in this Codex, Chaos Cultists were finally getting a little bit of time to shine. They have been pretty underserved by previous codices, it's fair to say. But this time, Cultists were getting a whole new squad. They were getting all sorts of new units. There was even a new Cultist-specific HQ, the Dark Commune, coming out. Everything is coming up, Cultists, right? Wrong. Ugh. This is so disappointing, because now we've gotten to look at the models, the ones that are releasing this weekend. And I think my dream just got killed. You see, Games Workshop are selling their all new Chaos Cultist box at about £27.50 or $45 for 10 models. And all of them are completely monopose and contained on a single sprue. Ugh, there are no extra heads, there are no weapon options, no special weapons. There are no interchangeable parts, there are no options at all. In other words, the Chaos Cultists are statues. Many of them are cast as a single piece almost. They may as well be made out of resin or metal. But last I looked, Warhammer 40k is an army game, right? I mean, I planned on having hundreds of cultists in my army, and we're ignoring a little special rule inside the Codex about mortals. I was just going to ignore that, because that's a terrible rule, honestly. I don't like it at all. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but even just a single squad of cultists can take up to 20 miniatures. But in the Chaos Cultist box you can buy, you only get 10 different poses, and they're all melee. This means that for every single squad of Chaos Cultists in my army, I'm going to have two versions of Tube Nipple Guy here. For every single squad, 
two of him. Every single squad. I'm doubling down on the same models. The same specific poses on every single model. And the new sprue doesn't even include auto guns. It doesn't include any of the special weapons the army can take. There's no shotguns or flamers, even though the codex says I can have that in my squad. But don't worry, don't worry, you can buy the old cultists of the abyss box. You know the one that was sold for Blackstone Fortress years ago. That means you can get it. Count them, it. Very specific monopose looking guys with special weapons. And it also happens to contain four specific models with auto guns. Again, all of them with extremely distinctive specific poses. Poses that cannot be changed. So if you want your 20 man squad of auto guns, firstly, you gotta buy the cultists of the abyss box five times and then Five of your autogun models will be Div here. You know, the guy running with the lunchbox. I mean, I guess they got their mandate at lunch breaks at least. Oh, and shoes. But really, the same looking models over and over and over again, does that really scream chaos to you? It's the orc boys all over again from last year. It's always the good ones that go. And sure, the models look good, as do the accursed cultists as well. You've got your mutants and you've got your tormented. They look cool, but again, these guys are monopose, and they have very distinctive looks to them. I mean, it's gonna be hard to ignore Mr. Look What I Found when he's repeated for the fourth, fifth, sixth time in your army. And sure, designing good multipose kits is hard to do. But I thought the Games Workshop makes the greatest miniatures in the world here. To be honest, I think these cultists are really bad models and it's because they don't do what they need to do this is a miniatures game it's not just a painting hobby the models we buy are ostensibly for play we can't just judge miniatures on the depth and sharpness of detail just like we wouldn't judge a video game solely on its graphical capabilities even if the graphics are beautiful we need to judge the gameplay. Beautiful graphics do not supplant great gameplay. They should supplement it. And for me, the gameplay of a miniature is its posability. The storytelling opportunities that the model presents right out of the box. And these miniatures absolutely fail to do that. It's genuinely so frustrating. I can't decide whether or not my model's gonna have a arm raised in anger or down at his side cause he's at ease. It feels like these kits completely rob me of agency. I can't play with these toys, Games Workshop, they're toys! But sometimes it feels to me like Games Workshop would be happier if they were just designing ornaments. Things that were fit only to be placed in a display cabinet and never touched again. Forgotten about forever. Well, Games Workshop, I'm a gonna touch, which is partly why I have that restraining order. And these models just don't do it for me. They don't look fun to build. And yes, I hear the common hobby refrain. Nothing is monopose if you're brave enough. Well, I'm not brave enough. These things are $45 for 10 models. What if I screw up? I do not want to do Raid Shadow Legend ads. I really don't. Don't make me do that. And I guarantee that anything that I kit bash will look far worse than a simple multi-pose kit. Only those with skill, with dedication, with patience, and all the required bits are able to truly indulge in kit bashing. Expecting hobbyists to kit bash punishes new hobbyists. People who aren't like Jeffrey Dahmer and haven't acquired this huge collection of useless arms and legs. The fools. They don't know the pleasure of limb gathering. And let's be honest, how many people are actually going to kit bash these? I bet it's not that many. And if tons of people are, then surely that's kind of a bad thing? It's kind of a point against the model, right? If everybody is having to kit bash in order to create a model that kind of looks good and fits the part and looks a little bit different from the others, 
Doesn't that count against the kit? I mean, just compare these models to the models that accompany like Wargames Atlantic sales. They are a company that sell customizable, multi-part, posable miniatures. In other words, they sell kits that are fun to build. And to me, that means those models are better. So why? Why are Games Workshop models like this? Why are Games Workshop going down this dark path more and more often? Could it be that Games Workshop are trying to stifle the creativity of their customers so that only they will be the ultimate arbiters of what a model can and cannot look like, aiming to turn their imaginative hobbyists into brain-dead consumers used to buying the same variation of the same models over and over and over again, ultimately beholden to the whims of their corporate overlords. <laughs> I mean, probably not. It's more likely that they're just cutting corners and saving money. The truth of the matter is, is that these monopose models are cheaper and easier to make. You see, when building multi-part posable miniatures, you need sculptors who can think in a very specific way. Someone who can build multiple joints to fit into multiple holes. <laughs> and who can cleverly fit cuts into the design. They need to be creative and hide the fact that multiple slots can have multiple variations, different things going in there, different limbs, different heads, for example. And whatever way they're angled, it looks kind of natural. They're just more complicated as kits. This takes time, money, and effort. So instead, why not simply build a model in some 3D imaging software, something like Blender, then run it through an AI program that will automatically make all the optimal cuts. This means that you will optimize all of the space on your sprue and have the model ready for release on Monday. Incidentally, by the way, that AI software is why so many Games Workshop models these days have incredibly unintuitive cuts. Cuts which I find incredibly unfun. But it's all just Games Workshop trying to be as efficient as possible. But it is working. Games Workshop have optimized the model making process. Sadly, they've also optimized all of the fun out of assembly. Like an MMO player looking up a guide to a dungeon, ruining the experience for themselves. They have turned it from an enjoyable part of the hobby into something that feels more akin to unpaid labor. Something I should be doing in a factory or even worse, an Ikea. When I open a Games Workshop kit these days and I see that familiar assembly instructions where all of the models have been pre-posed for me in the booklet, it, it makes me, oh, it's hellish. I've stopped having fun building Games Workshop models. How can I say that they actually make the best miniatures in the world when how they build their models is turning me off buying any of them at all. And look, this isn't entirely new. Chaos Cultists have never had a multi-pose kit. They have always been monopose and that sucks. That is a feeling. This was Games Workshop's chance to improve on their previous designs and they blew it. Instead, they have repackaged models from a board game and basically made things that may as well be in PVC. It's incredibly disappointing and has killed all of my enthusiasm for building a Chaos Space Marine army. Oh well, at least I can build a Traitor Guard force using the new Kill Team Morok box kit. Wait, hold on, isn't that Monopose 2? Oh fuck! And if you're interested in hearing me talk about why Chaos are the secret protagonists of Warhammer 40k, check out my video here. And a huge thanks to Steven Jackson, Sonic Bread, and Beauregard Equipment. Thanks so much, guys. And a huge thanks to all of my patrons. And I'll catch you next time. Bye bye